Hi, welcome to Coffee with Ronnie. I am so happy that you're here today. I'm Ronnie Walter, and I can't wait to introduce you to our guest today. Her name is Sherry Balul, and she is a San Francisco-based author, teacher, and coach. And she's the author of a book called Say It Now, 33 Ways to Say I Love You to the Most Important People in Your Life, which is very cool, very mm -hmm. cool. Because sometimes we need that. We need that. And, and then there are 34 more ways to say, or 32 <laughs> more ways to say that. Okay. Sherry is also a bundle of high energy and enthusiasm, a wearer of hats, and an advocate for joy and celebration. And I'm telling you, we all need a little more of that. And the reason I brought Sherry on today was I wanted to talk to her about how do we, as creative professionals, who work alone by ourselves and slog away day after day, how do we find those moments of joy and celebration when, when it's not really obvious sometimes that we have hit some big successful moment? So that's what we want to talk about. So welcome, Sherry. I am super glad you're here. And I hope you're caffeinated. <laughs> it's a All must. Right. It's a must. <laughs> Always. Always. I, I love coffee, which is partly, yeah. why, partly why I loved you right away, Ronnie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it is my lifeblood is coffee. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your path and how you got to the point where you're like, I'm writing a book about how to tell people that, I, that, that how to tell people how to love each other. Awesome. Yes. So first of all, thank you so much, Ronnie. I'm so happy to be here. I've, hey. I've watched those. I love your energy you really bring the joy in your, in your shows. So thank you for that. Cool. Say that. Um, so a lot of times when people hear about the work I do, the name of my company is Simply Celebrate. People can often think, oh, you know, you're just one of those naturally happy people, bounds out of bed each morning, you know, full of joy. That's not the truth. You know, as often, right, we teach what we need right. to learn. And I have a um, history Thank goodness it's over now, but of, of depression and anxiety. Oh, wow. Yes. So my work actually started with a suicidal phase of my life. Oh, my and, goodness. Right. I know. It's always, you know, and I, I don't, right. you know, I don't need to be a downer about it, but right. I think it's right. Think, well, it's part of the journey. It's part of the journey. And I think it's important for people to know because a central part of what I teach is that it's a practice. Love is a practice. Celebration is a practice. Joy is a practice. We don't have to be naturally happy or celebratory people. And I think that's really important. So for me, um, you know, I'll just give you the quick, what, what, what happened is I was really by some grace led to a meditation class during that period. And it had felt like the, an iron wall closing in on me, the, the darkness and the despair. Mm -hmm. But when I went to that meditation class, I took, there was one breath. You know how you focus on the in-breath and the out-breath? One in-breath where I literally, I felt okay. Wow. And it, yeah, it was like the pain for that second. And, and I, I always think of it as like a pinprick in that iron wall, like a little pinprick of light. And that made all the difference. Because I saw that it wasn't solid. You know, my conditioned mind, my monkey oh. mind, right? Like, I, I had been- Like there were little spaces that you could get into. That's exactly it, wow. Ronnie. Wow. That's exactly it. And so I set off the next day to find those little spaces that you're, you know, and I just, you know, I would hold my cat and think, okay, you know, I don't want to kill myself right now. I'm okay. Right. And see the sunset and, you know, and, and those little pinpricks of light became my practice. I started practicing looking for them in my life, and then I started practicing creating them. And the real secret sauce, and this is sort of, you know, 30 years later, right, a whole long right. journey. Right. What, what happened was I realized there were a lot of people in the dark, and I could create pinpricks of light for other people, and I was always the first recipient. So that's kind of the, the you know, the quick version. But, um, well, that's rather huge. <laughs> It's fun. It's funny to try and say it really quickly, right, but right. in a nutshell, that's what happened. But yeah, I know when, when you're trying to distill it down to this is who I am and this is what I do. Sometimes you have to take the short 
answer. I mean, that told us a lot, a lot. And that is a pretty profound several minutes of explaining that process. And what a, what a moment, what a moment where mm. you took that leap of faith, because we never know which leap of faith is going to be the payoff. If you exactly. were looking for payoffs, we're always looking for some answer or something, but that leap of faith was that moment where you said, I think I can see something differently now. Yes. Wow. Ronnie. And I love that you use the word moment because moments are the foundation of my work. I truly, I mean, we live in moments and sometimes we forget that. Just right. like I forgot or I thought that, you know, depression was a solid thing. Sometimes we think our lives are, you know, here's my life. But, but just like you just said, there's moments. And right. every moment we get to choose. Right. And we get to string them together as well. And we wow. do that too. Wow. That, that is... That is really profound. That is really profound. Wow. Woo. So, okay. <laughs> Maybe a sip of coffee is called. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> like a gallon. Okay. Sip of coffee. A little, here's to you. Yes, a little sip. Here's darling. Okay. So the people listening to us are mostly, I'd say all of them, because I do believe we're all creative beings, but you know, we're, we're artists and writers here. Um, so, and one of the issues that we have is, is like what you just did, you just distilled down what you do and why you do it in a very succinct way. And artists often, because we are visual people, we have a hard time articulating those things into a string of words that other people can understand easily. We can stand there and go, well, and then I draw pictures and then I send them to people and blah, blah, blah. And pretty soon they're like, yeah, I got to go get a cocktail. Sorry. There's somebody way more interesting than you. So can you give us some little tips on how you might do that? To how to, you know, sort of contain, but, but keep the joy and the enthusiasm of what we're doing, but contain it into a small way of explaining to people. Oh, I love that question, Ronnie. I think that one of the most important things to me when I'm connecting with someone is I want to know what people love. Right? I want to know what brings them to life. I want to know what it is about their work that sparks them. And so I think sometimes what happens um, is that as creative people, we forget, we forget what, what makes us so happy about the work we do. Oh, that's, and, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're focused on, right. here's what I create. You know, here's my end product. But truthfully, I think what interests us about each other is process and is that it's the creative joy so i would say you know and you can i'd love to hear what you think too but for me if someone leads with the joy you know i love color you know i love color everything i do involve like i'm looking at this painting behind you right like <laughs> everything i create is based in the way that colors help me feel different emotions and i want to convey that to other people so they can have more color and more emotion in their lives. Okay, so you're kind of, this is what I do and this is how it can reflect on you. This is how you can enjoy what I do. So you kind of make a circle around that conversation. Right, because we don't want to leave the other person out of it. Right. You know, oftentimes if I'm talking to people what I do, I'll just sort of ask them outright, you know, do you ever have times in your life where you feel in the dark? You know, where you feel like you can't find the light and what do you do? Right, to bring, to bring them into our work is a way to, I think, both help us to remember that we don't have to like tell them everything about our work, but to, to engage them in it. Right, right. That is, that is really interesting. I mean, one of the things that I've always done, like sometimes it can feel really dry. Like if I say to people, well, I design greeting cards, they're like, really? They think I'm sitting in the corner with a rubber stamper and folding paper, you know? And then they want to say, Are, does anybody buy greedy cards anymore? But if I say, you know how hard it is to find words to say to somebody else? Yes. Well, I design greeting cards, so I make it easier for you to express yourself. And then I go, oh, yeah, that is what a greeting card's for. And then they understand that there's a deeper process than me just folding paper and drawing clowns on them, you know? And um, not that I've ever drawn a clown, <laughs> but I could. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Ronnie. I, I, I know I could. It wouldn't even be scary. 
I love what you just said before you run over that because I just want to really pause there. That was so beautiful because again, you didn't, I mean, you told us what you did, but really more so you told us why it matters. Why does it matter to me what you do? Right. Right. And I think that was so brilliant. Oh, oh yeah. You know? and I think that we can apply that to most things that we do. And when you can start with it, well, you know how, or when you say, do you ever feel like things are closing in on you? Or do you ever feel like there's darkness or whatever? They can go, well, yeah, I do. And you can say, well, I help people and finish the sentence. And so I think there is a way to do that, that, um, that can help people go, they sort of anchor it and go, okay, got it. Got it. And then they can choose to have a further conversation with you or not. Or not. Or exactly. Not. Exactly. Well, we kind of... Yeah, they got cheesecake over there. So I'm going over there. <laughs> right. We're sort of opening the door right. and they might walk through or not, but, but we've done our part of, of opening the door for them. Right. Oh, yeah. that's very cool. That is very cool. I, yeah, I so appreciate that. And, 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 and it's sometimes hard because you just want to go, oh, I just draw pictures. You know, I write stuff. Mm, that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> so since you are a celebration expert, which is a very cool thing to say, I'm a celebration expert. Um, how do you suggest we celebrate? Like, okay, we're slogging away in the studio. We haven't seen a human soul except for like the mailman. Um, how, what, what can you tell us about celebrating the tiny victories when really it is a solo practice? What do you do or how can you help us figure that out? Awesome. Thank you for asking that because that's my favorite thing to talk about. Cool. I, you know, I, I think, you know, we live in a culture that is so focused on the end product. You know, where are you getting to? How are you going to fix X, Y, Z? How are you going to get? And my whole philosophy around celebration and for particularly, you know, those of us who work alone, who might have a project that's a creative process project that to celebrate the process. So to celebrate, you know, you, you can choose so many things. So for instance, it might be, you're gonna start a painting, right? And you go and you choose the colors. And then to consciously and intentionally, you can even write it on your schedule, to stop and even if it's a, a few minutes to pause and celebrate, wow, you know, I'm starting this painting. I'm someone who is drawn, look at these colors I just, you know, to, to bask in the starting process, to bask in, say there's a point where you get stuck, which is a part where oftentimes we might berate ourselves or right. get frustrated oh, or, sure. right? But instead to turn that on its head and to stop and say, I'm a creative person. I'm taking so much risk. I'm gonna celebrate right now. I'm the sort of person who's so courageous to step into the creative process and to be here for everything that it offers. And we all know that it offers a lot of frustration and not quite what we wanted or doesn't feel like what we'd imagined. But to celebrate who we are, I think is essential in this. And it's one of the things that we can forget. You know, here we are talking and we're talking about the creative process. There are a lot of people who have completely shut that door of their lives, right? right. Thinking oh. that they're not, right? And so those of us who are in the creative process to really celebrate who we are and not focus on the end result. The other thing is, I think there's so many ways and we each know what it is for, for each of us. You know, for me, I love going to the beach, you know, so that's a celebration for me. I might go to the beach and make, I, I do a lot of audio recordings, coaching recordings for myself. I might go to the beach and make a recording that says, oh my gosh, you know, you're in the middle of this, this essay or this article. I know it feels like you're stuck, but this is so exciting. You're a writer, you know, you're living the life you always wanted. Something like that to just remind me. Right. Change my focus to, to, to what's there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, totally. Totally. I mean, that, that is, I mean, that self-talk is, is so critical to our success or whether we fold and go, yeah, this isn't for me anymore, you know? And so 
when you, I love that idea of just going away and you know talking to yourself because <laughs> isn't that what creative people do? And that's what they expect us to do. So if you are talking to yourself on the beach, they go, she must be the artist. <laughs> and that's fine. That's fine. That's um, fine. Yes. And, and so how does that, so I guess my question is, is that, I mean, how do you sustain that? And how do you, how do you rest from that? Because I feel like being, staying in the creative process, I mean, it's always a courageous step. I mean, who, you know, it's definitely in the, who do you think you are, kiddo? You know, that you're going to pick up a brush, you're going to write something on a piece of paper. I mean, that is just a brave moment. But it can feel unrelenting. It's a moment where we have to make that decision to do that. And sometimes I can feel unrelenting, like we're on a bit of a treadmill, like if we don't continue doing this, then we've lost it all. So how do you kind of rejuvenate yourself, bring yourself back to a centered place to, in order to sustain that activity? What oh, is that, that is a great question. And, you know, I, I mentioned meditation as sort of the beginning of my journey. Meditation has played a huge role my my entire life and it can be you know I, I do different kinds. I do Zen meditation, which is counting the breaths. I also do a lot of audio meditations um, I am a huge advocate for that especially for creative people because that that place of getting quiet First of all, you know, it's a way of releasing what you talked about before that self-talk that may oftentimes be negative but it's also a way that we get to hear you know, whether you think it's your, your own higher power, you think there's a source or divine power, it doesn't really matter, but we hear something else. And often to me, that something else is really important to my work. You know, it might be a, a direction I need to go or something I hadn't thought of or an entire rewrite of something that comes through. I also think that the other really important place, and for me, and you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear for you, but for me to connect with what delights me is huge. And this is really interwoven with the life of celebration because I've really learned to pay attention to, to what delights me. If I walk outside and I'm struck by the light on a tree, I'll stop and let myself be with that right. to really experience it. And that is a mini rejuvenation. Even if I'm just, my studio is out in the backyard. If I'm going from my studio to go get a glass of water, there's a, a moment of, you know, oh, you know, look at that hummingbird, you know, that's magical. And those, mo again, it's moments, but it's amazing what a moment of delight, how that can feed us. Right. Cool. Yeah, that, no, that is, that is, we don't take enough of that because I think particularly when you are, you know, doing this as you're living, that, you know, there's got to be some monetary compensation on the end or other end of this activity that we forget how important those moments are because that's what feeds the thing that we bring to the world that people like and eventually exchange for money and so <laughs> it's hard to you know stay totally in the i'm only doing this because i want to bring things out to the world when what we want to come back to us is the financial payoff, if you will, not to make this super crass, but it really is part of that. And, and sometimes I think, and I think too, in our culture, you know, hard work is what our grandparents and parents told us. That's how you get things done. You work and you work and you work and you work and looking out the window at a hummingbird feels like frivolous activity. But I think we're starting to realize how much looking at the humming, hummingbird is what feeds all of this. And that can bring us back to the studio. And yeah. that's, a, that's a tough one to remember when you are uh, of the industrialized world of we produce people, we produce. Right, because it, it sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? It does, it does, and yet, yeah. When we're talking about, you know, that of course that there's the financial piece of this. I remember hearing someone say once who was a painter, you know, that what the person's really buying is not that painting they're buying her experience of standing in front of that particular valley with that particular sky and that particular colors of the, the sunset. And that, that what they're buying is that beautiful present experience that she was having. And I love that. I always think about that. That's really, that is 
really great. I hadn't really thought about it that way, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you know, we can all look at a scene and say you, uh, everybody's, because we've all been there where you're at a beautiful place and everyone's standing there taking the same picture. And what is that experience like when someone interprets it from their heart into a painting or a more beautiful photograph or whatever that is or writes about it you understand that experience much more than you just standing behind your cell phone um, and a lineup of people all taking the same picture and that is the difference and that's one of the things that we bring as creatives to the world is like we get to show you this in a different way yes that's, boy that's that's kind of big too it is big, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And so, so, Rami, when you, when I look at one of your paintings, really, it's like it took your whole life experience to get to that painting, right? Um, you know, <laughs> yes, yes. And it's, it's one of those things, too, like, and, that, and that's when I talk to younger artists, it's like, oh, there's so much ahead. And you're always filling your cup with images, with experiences, high, high expressions of, you know, laughter and tears and all that and the lowest of lows, it all goes into the, the, the pocket. It all goes in there and, and that's what we bring out. And, and we have to um, take a moment to acknowledge that and I guess celebrate it. <laughs> we go along <laughs> yes and, and you know we remember that that is valuable stuff man that is the that is the meat and potatoes of this whole thing isn't it yeah. truly yeah. truly and so back to just because i want to drive this home because it is so easy to forget that we may think that it's all about industry and work and sweat but the truth of it is as creative people our relationship to to joy and to life and to nature and to people that's all such a part of our work and we we have to invest in it we have to yeah 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 it, it is i'm telling you it is so easy to forget that so easy to forget so how do you so on that vein how do you remind yourself like when you're in like you're writing a book or you're working on a class and you're like nose to the grindstone how do you what are the reminders that you have to just stay in that present state meditation obviously yeah. absolutely meditation also you may notice i wear hats you know if you're around me i wear hats all the time the the thing about hats for me is that when i put a hat on in the morning it's my way of saying don't forget today's oh. party you know no matter what's going on it's a party today and i have to find a way it's it's now been such a pr part of my practice of um how is today a party right and so i may schedule a lot of things in i do in fact i schedule and i i intentionally schedule you know it's not just that i'll say hey ronnie let's have a cup of coffee i'll say Ronnie, let's have a cup, cup of coffee and let's make sure we toast to that painting that you just finished or let's toast right. to, I just an article, I'd love to make sure we acknowledge it. That there's an intentional, and that's on my schedule, you know. Wow, that's cool. Absolutely, absolutely. Because it's so easy, right? The days would just go by. I also have a lot of reminders for myself. I put notes up. I listen to those recordings I talked about all the time and those recordings are always reminding me to celebrate the process, to celebrate this or that, or to acknowledge this or appreciate that. Um, it's my way of just sort of having a constant coach in my head. Right. That's me. You know, I think I'm going to try that. I'm going to try yes. that because it, it, I mean, for one thing, it reminds you of the, some profound thought you had that you could, you could use in some way. But I, I find, and I, I know this is true because I read it on the internet, but I, <laughs> that, um, People get ideas and they let down their um, sort of consciousness in the shower yes. and driving. And I've yes. always, when I drive by myself for any length of time, longer than just going to get my hair cut or something, I definitely, my brain is downloading thoughts and ideas. Yes. And having a, a mechanism to record that is a really good thing. I don't think I'll do that in the shower. But... <laughs> I, but uh, that, it is interesting how many ideas happen in the shower or when you're doing something else and, and just letting the thoughts 
come about. And I, I think I'm going to implement the recording little coaching for myself. I love that, Ronnie. I love it. You know, and the other, just the one other thing I wanted to say about sort of bringing it more into our everyday life is just like I sort of said with the hats, but we can do this to make sure that we consciously associate particular things with celebration. You know, so what just dropped in my mind, I was um, in Ashland with a friend last week and I found this dress that I just loved. It was just, it just said celebration to me. But it wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to buy this dress. But I consciously connected it. I'm still doing my book launch, right? So I consciously connected it. This is my book launch dress. Ah. This is my book launch celebration dress. This is my, I'm here with my friend in Ashland. I'm at a bookstore reading and she's with me and I'm doing my book launch dress. So that it, it's embedded in my head. When I see that dress, it feels like a celebration. You know, it reminds me to celebrate being a writer. Right. And we can do that with anything. It could be a, a plate that we find that we really love. And we say, this is, my, this is my plate I'm using to celebrate that I had the courage to keep going on this project. Whatever. Right. So those little visual cues, like the hat, like associating a garment or a thing. I, I wear this necklace almost every coaching call or <sighs> um, uh, when I do my coffee with Ronnie because it's a tree and it reminds me that we're staying in a place of growth. Yes. So, it, it, and it is my tiny little reminder. My friend Debbie wears a bracelet that says love on it. And I, I'm just going to, I'll just tell the story about her. It says love on it. And when she feels like she needs more love for herself, she makes the love face her. And when she feels like she's in a place to give love to the world, she turns the bracelet around. So she re, it's a reminder for her to bring love out to the world. Um, which to me is just like gives me chills when I think about it. I know, it. that's I beautiful. Think, yeah. So those little tiny things are the things. I mean, those are those moments. Those are, And, you know, there's something on a poster somewhere about, you know, celebrate the small moments because they're all small moments or whatever that is. But it is true. <laughs> it is so true. I mean, that's what we're all after are those moments where you go, that was amazing, cool special, whatever that is. And we can have that every day. We can have that every day. We can. And I just want to say something back to you because when you talked about your necklace, what happened was, I call it putting a frame around something, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of put a frame around. I noticed your necklace. I thought, oh, that's a beautiful necklace. But now you put a frame around it and called it a celebration. I mean, you didn't right. use those words, but you know, but you right. basically said you gave it a sort of a stop and reflect moment for yourself, but also for me and anybody else listening. So, so what that did is that that brought us all into a moment of deeper meaning, right? Right. right. And to me, that's a lot of what, what I'm going for. You know, to me, deeper meaning is joy, is celebration. Right. Right. And that was a beautiful example of it. Like, so we could share more of that with each other. For sure. For sure. I mean, sometimes we do it and it's sort of our own little thing. But as we share that, it becomes, and then everybody can say, well, what is my thing? And I want a thing because I want to have that moment of reminder, of pausing, whatever that is. And I think that having some sort of thing that does that in a tangible way is a really beautiful thing. A nice reminder for all of us to take that moment and celebrate that, oh my gosh, we're walking on this earth. <laughs> you know, that's a pretty right. cool thing. That's a pretty cool thing. Okay, now Sherry, Sherry does not know the answers to my caffeinated question. Ooh! So we're going to give the caffeinated questions. There's three of them. I love this, I'm if so excited. Here, I would make you pick them out, but I'm just- Oh, no. okay. Sorry, no, that's not the rules. Okay. I can't. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, it doesn't matter. Time and space doesn't matter. Being dead or alive doesn't matter. Who would you like to have lunch with? Oh, I love that question. Can I have a moment to think? You may. I'll drink tea. Coffee. Yeah, drink a little Coffee. tea. Yeah. Coffee. Oh, I know the answer. Cool. I would want to have lunch. Well, oh, I could almost cry. I would want to have lunch with my son. When he's 80. Oh. Oh. Yes. That is way cool. Oh, way it just cool. Brings, that it just brings tears to my yeah. eyes. I never thought of that ever, Ronnie, in my life. Wow. And you just gave me that wonderful, yes. 
Oh, oh that is a cool idea. That's a very cool idea. Yeah. What because would he say? What would he say as an 80-year-old guy? Well, that's the thing. Well, of course, when he's 80, it'll be like being, you know, 32 or something. I hope so. <laughs> right? But, but that's a really cool idea. And see, so who are, what will you reflect back on your life? And what would you tell me? I think that is fantastic. Because that is one of the things about, but it's just one of the things about being a parent. He, my son's 18. And he's changed so much, you know, over these years. And I'm sure he will continue. Well, and that's a good thing. <laughs> well, it's, a fair, it's a very good thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I sometimes think, you know, no matter how long I live, I sure do hope he lives longer. Of course, we don't right, know. But I sure do hope. And that I get a little bit sad. Like, I won't know. I won't know who that person is, you know. Right. So it's fun to think. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna play with that a little bit. That that is awesome. Okay, uh, what's your favorite movie? Oh, first thing that dropped in my mind, and I'm just gonna go with it because it's it's definitely one of my favorites. Is Amelie? Do you know that movie? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's been years since I. Doesn't she wear hats? She does. <laughs> And I think she rides a bicycle. I have this yeah, thing she's also. She's beautiful, gorgeous. Yes. It's also very cute, yeah. 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 Um, but there's something about that movie, and it's been a long time since I've seen it too, which I think I need to see it again. But there was something I think that taught me about being myself or, you know, being quirky or, you know, the whimsy that we can bring into life. I don't know. I think that there's, there's something in that. Cool. No, that's, that's wonderful. And I got such a visual image of that. As soon as you said that, I was like, oh, I can see the French countryside or the, you know, I get it. You know, I just got the, the vibe of that. Okay, my final caffeinated question okay. is. I'm a little teary from that sun question, sorry. Aww. I know, I'm, uh, let me wipe my, okay, yes, I'm with you. Cool, that is beautiful. Okay, now again, time, space, practicality means nothing in this question. You're stranded on a desert island and you can only have one food and I'll let you have a category of food, but you can only have one food. What is it? Wow. That's easy. Popcorn. What? Popcorn. <laughs> I, just, I would probably die pretty quickly, I guess, but <laughs> yeah, happy. Yes. practicality does not make any matter. Well, you know, because when you think about popcorn, that could be savory or sweet, which is good. You could have it as kettle corn. You could also have it as like oh, so popcorn is actually a full food. That is good. You can have it different kinds of meals. You know what I thought about, Ronnie? You're so practical. <laughs> All I thought about was popcorn. I love pop. It just makes me happy, right? Popcorn is a, a, a popcorn in a book. I'm happy. Oh. So hopefully, I'm allowed to have a book on that desert island too. But you don't have you to don't... write them yourself. But those are you know. I didn't make the rules. I didn't make the rules. Oh wait. Yes, I did make it. Okay, so, um, cool. A book and popcorn on a desert island. That sounds like the perfect vacation, actually. I'm as happy, long as you yeah. had coffee bookending that. Um, oh, yeah, coffee. That whole thing. Okay, now, tell me what you're working on right now. And also, what is exciting about what you're working on right now for you? Ooh, I am... Um, as you know, this book just launched. So well, I've got a, a big focus, but, but the cornerstone of the book is something called a love list. And I'm going to throw this out. And I'm going to hope that somebody might catch it out there and do it. Very simply, it's, it's a brainstorm list of why you love someone. So I've got all kinds of prompts. There's a thousand ways to present it. You can make fortune cookies, joy jars. You could put them on, you know, a poster with photos. There's, but the point is, is I'm really excited about, I've been having different people in my Simply Celebrate community have been hosting parties for the book launch where we make love lists together. Oh, and that sounds wonderful. Beautiful. So what they're doing is gathering people in their home. They put me on video and I'm giving prompts and somebody's making one for her mom who has cancer, right? Somebody's making one for her best friend who's turning 40. Some, you know, someone's making one for her son or husband. Um, and it's amazing to do. I've, I've, I've always promoted making love lists. This is the first time I've been doing it in groups with people. People are crying and laughing and we're falling in love with each other's people, right? As we go right, along. Right. So this is what I'm really excited about because I, I have a- I love that. I oh, love thank that. you. Yes. Cool. I have this great vision of getting sponsored by O Magazine. I'm putting it out to the universe. Um, 
But I was uh, right there. I can you? Yeah. Thank you. Thank I'll you. Take a couple calls, you know. So I've got something like a gypsy caravan, you know, something beautiful and delightful. And I, I get to try someone with a gypsy caravan. No, you don't. Yes, I do. See? Yes, I do. It's in the Twin Cities, but That's all right. I know a gypsy caravan. Have gypsy caravan, I'll Kate, travel. Kate, if you're watching, we need your gypsy caravan. <laughs> See? <laughs> Manifestation in the I making. Know. Right here. Yeah. Anyway, that's my vision is that I have something beautiful like that, that I get to travel around the country and host these gatherings and people make love lists and then they go off and give them to people. I want a million of them. I want to inspire a million of them. Oh, that's well, that's a pretty big thing to be excited about. I love that entire, all of that. Thank that you, is Ron. fantastic. That is fantastic. And I have a husband who's going to have a birthday with a roundish number on it so that could be wow. yeah that would be very cool awesome oh my gosh Woo! this was <laughs> really vibey and awesome and exciting and sherry i can't thank you enough i mean so much gratitude for you coming on bringing your lively spirit your uh tips all of this and i hope everyone writes a love list it has just been amazing you brought so many good vibes and happy thoughts and a moment for us to figure out what our celebrations are and i also encourage you to buy sherry's book you can hold it up if you like i see it in the background over there so feel happy, free to, have, happy, to, have happy a copy. to have a copy it's adorable always right and, next to me yes always always so um, thank you again, and I so appreciate your time. If you have questions, I will link the book. Anything you guys want to know about Sherry, we'll link her links and um, be there for any questions you guys might have. But thank you so much again. This has been a delight. Ronnie, please let me take a minute to just tell you, thank you. I feel like this has been a gift to me to get to spend this time with you. And I want to acknowledge that. Like you you brought such a beautiful present. <laughs> you do, you're very present. <laughs> you're bringing all your energy. I know, I can tell. You've really, it's an intentional showing up for your guests. And I just thank you. It means a lot and it makes it, it really makes it a gift. Oh, cool. I'm so glad, I am so glad. So my dear, cheers, darling. Oh, cheers. Clink. Bye. Clink. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.